Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about disk drive health matrix, device health matrix and smart mon tools. So in this video I'm going to go through a little bit on how a Ceph cluster can maintain and monitor your devices in order to know when you need to swap out that drive that you haven't been keeping attention on for years now. It just worked and worked and worked and suddenly it doesn't really have that much of a late life expectancy anymore so you need to replace it. And there is a facility for that in Ceph. So we cut over to my Ceph cluster here. We can see on the node one, two here on the devices we see which device I have, the state of health at the moment unknown and then life expectancy. And life expectancy is a calculation that is done over six days and more. And it tries to figure out how healthy your device is. And it has three levels. The first level is good. It will be uh, telling you that you have more than six weeks until the drive fails. And then we have warning, which is between two and six weeks. And then we have bad, which is less than two weeks left on operation and if you are in a bad state replace that device urgently. So that's what we want to accomplish here but I haven't seen anything here and in order to have this you need to have the smart mon tools installed and you need to have a version that is newer than 7.0 uh, and I have 7.2 I believe uh, but it didn't go uh, come packaged in the uh, Debian distribution that I have. I run Buster. It's available already in Bullseye, but not in Buster. So I actually had to add the back porch. And if we go to my node here and we go into etc apt sources list uh, list. And we uh, cat that. We can see that in the bottom of this one we have the Debian back porch, the Buster back porch. And in order to install something here, we just run apt install uh, the specific tooling in this case, smart mon tools slash Buster back porch. So that's the way to install a back port. In your system there is a, a couple of different ways but I found that to be the easiest way. So now in my Buster environment I have the Smart Remote tool in the right version. But if we go back here we still have the state of health unknown and if we look at the device health here we see that we get error code minus 12. And the reason for that is you have too little memory left in order to run smartmon tools and if we look at my device performance details here we can see that i have one osd on a system with four gigabytes of ram and there isn't that much overhead left in order to run the smartmon tools if i switch over to my node 3 here on the other hand i have added an extra ram stick to it so it has eight gigs of memory there is a little bit more of an overhead here and if I look at device health, I can run the smart data tooling. So I get smart information and I've run it for more than six days. So if I go over to devices, I can see that this has a st status of good and a life expectancy of more than six weeks. So that's what we want to accomplish. But I didn't get here without turning a couple of things on and this new feature or new and new it came in nautilus so it's a couple of uh, versions back and in the documentation here that says that you have to do device monitoring on but that is turned on in your cluster now uh, automatically so if you're running octopus and pacific at least those flags are already turned on so you don't need to run this command but you need to know that you can turn it on and off if you like and you can also run the Ceph device get health matrix on a specific device to get which uh, what the device metrics have been day by day. We will look at the example later on. And we can also tell it to scrape. Um, and one very important part here is the failure prediction. 
because that's what we are showing here. And that's done by either a local profit store or a cloud profit store. I'm running the local one. I haven't even installed the plugin for uh, the cloud one. Uh, we have the installed plugin for cloud in our production environment where I haven't turned that on. I'm still running the local, but they say that that's a pretty good uh, model. But if you want an even more accurate one, and if you want to use the cloud one, you will send uh, health metrics about your devices to this profit store. And they also have a payment model so you can make it even more accurate if you like to pay for it. Uh, so that's the different choices you can make, either a local one, a cloud one, and pay for it if you want it to be extra um, on the point. You can also turn off a setting here that uh, it will set the OSD out if it has too many failures in it. So you will not use that one and the cluster can switch things around and move them out of that drive if you need to move, uh, change it out. And later on, they will also add functionality that the specific device that is bad will blink. So you know in your storage cluster which drive you need to pull and so on. So that's a really interesting um, application here. If we look at the configuration and we search for prediction, we see here that we have the device failure prediction mode. I've set my global to local. And if we go at the manager models here, we see that I have the prediction local model here and I turn that on. And here we have prediction interval and device health. We also have an, a scrape frequency and both of those are every 24 hours. So it will not run this often. We can also see here that the health metrics will be saved in the pool device health metrics. So if you have running a Ceph cluster and you have looked at your pools, you might recognize that you have one extra pool here called device health metrics. And that, that's where it will save all the device information over time for your specific uh, devices. So I have a lot of these metrics. Uh, if I go over to my editor here, can look at the fail device here. We see that we have uh, for at least a month uh, health metrics uh, that has failed. So if I look in here, I can see that the smart mon failed with this minus 12. If I on the other hand go over to my working profile here, you can see that I first had some failure code up here and then I had a lot of information here with statistics from the ATA devices and so on. So there is a lot of more information here to pick up and do some good monitoring on in order to know how the device health actually is in the system. So when you have set that on and have information for at least six days, you will have a good uh, health metrics in order to figure out how good is this device? Can I keep this drive or do I need to swap it out? So you say, Daniel, you have done it. It's done. You have solved everything. Now you can just go on and keep using Ceph. No, that's actually not the case. Because when it comes to our production environment, we are using MVME drives because we have a website that has a lot of traffic and needs fast uh, turnaround and really fast latency. So we, <laughs> we need to handle these drives as well. And sadly, the, I haven't gotten any health metrics out on those dev dev devices. And if I look into my um, script here and on these NVMe drives, we can see that we have less information about SATA and so on. But we can see that there's an, an, an NVMe drive and the smart data health uh, has an actual error here. Uh, NVMe, the command NVMe returned an error. So it couldn't run. And if we look at the NVMe, uh, command here. It's actually a CLI command that it's packaged with Debian. So I got that installed so I can check these MVME drives. But why does it fail? Do I send anything bad to it or and so on? So I, I wanted to look into that. And uh, first off, I got a failure that Smartmon tools couldn't uh, run at all. 
And if I look into the smart non tool uh, and trying to figure out why, uh, we can uh, look, first look into the USR lib uh, systemd uh, and system. And here we have the scripts that are running in my cluster. And if I look at the Prometheus uh, node exporter smart non uh, service, it's running a script called smartmon sh that will give you uh, some file here with all the smartmon uh, information and it actually failed with telling me that nvme was not supported in this script and if i look at the site here i figured out that there is actually an extra line here that wasn't available in my script which used the nvme drives and set the right variables that needed to go into the smartmon tool so that was needed in order to run the smartmon tool but this nvme command this cli still failed so i was again going back to the code and trying to figure out what's um, going wrong there and if we look here we have this block device run vendor mvne and it uh, runs the mvme command down here and does that with vendor then smart log add json and device and i tried to run this locally and it worked so i wonder why doesn't that work and if i uh, look where this runs it actually looks at the string here vendor and sends that in and it that is on the other hand set to the command in NVMe vendor, where if we go back to my data file here and I look at the NVMe vendor, it said LVM. And LVM is not the vendor of this specific NVMe drive. The vendor is actually Intel. And if I run the command with Intel, I get data back, but running it with LVM, that's a plugin that's not supported by this NVMe command. So it's still, there is still something that is not really working. Then again, we are running the latest Octopus version. Um, so a patch might come in the future pretty soon, or perhaps we need to upgrade to the latest Pacific and uh, check there if uh, they have fixed this issue. Uh, I will file an issue to the Ceph development team and hopefully they will give me a good response on why this is. But uh, I really like that you can follow the code and actually figure out why does this, doesn't this work. Um, if you want more information, there is a wiki with all the information about the NVMe device and so on. So you can run the command NVMe list to get a list of all the devices installed. And then you can check different health metrics and so on with this command as well. So it's a really good command. Sadly, it hasn't been implemented in Ceph correctly yet. So that's the current state of my health metrics for my different devices in my clusters. Have you run any health metrics in your cluster? At, uh, or do you know of an other implementation of this SmartMon tools? Have you used it before? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you have any other suggestions or comments, leave those down there as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I really hope to see you in the next video.